participants. Dr. Archana is going to share her slide. So just wait for a while. Meanwhile, we have received some questions and okay. other students can also. Submit their questions. So yeah, meanwhile, you can ask me also. Uh, so OK, shall I uh, forward yeah. the questions to you? Yes, okay. yes please. yeah, right. I will just read out since there is uh, this option is uh, not there of the chat box. So I will read out the question, Dr. Archana. Uh, there's a student who has written. I don't know if it's student or who has written because I have got the question. Uh, it is right now I'm working with a protein whose PDB structure is not available for now. Mm -hmm. When I modeled the same, it mm -hmm. showed 47% similarity mm -hmm. when it was built using homology modeling. Okay. Now, my aim is to inhibit that particular protein in my further research work. Okay. Is it safe to go forward with the same protein? Yeah, it is possible to do for inhibitory function, but we cannot use it for, uh, um, you know, docking. So for that, we need higher uh, percentage similarity. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think, yeah, this uh, participant is. Dimahi, but uh, Dr. Arjuna, I just wanted to request you uh, yeah. since uh, the discussion between the participant and you is not possible here. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't mind, you can share your mail ID so that students yeah. can get in touch with you if they have. Any yeah. yeah, so uh, I move on to the next question. The next question is how much confidence level is acceptable in the results of fire two? Yeah, I will just answer you. Uh, so. Uh, I hope uh, I uh, I'm able to uh, show you my email ID. Is it visible, ma'am? Yeah, yeah, it is visible. OK, so you can take this email ID and you can always uh, put a question over here and uh, this is the uh, ID which I sorry. This is the ID for which I want you people to retrieve the mRNA sequence. If you want, I can also give you the mRNA sequence, but you know it will be uh, difficult for me. You won't be able to, you know, copy and paste it. So I just want you to retrieve the mRNA sequence of this particular uh, gene ID. I had this impression that I'll be able to, you know, take the um, use the chat box and I thought of using it, but uh, probably so it is a gene from Arabidopsis. This is how it starts with AT and it is present on the fourth chromosome. This is how it is 4G and then the ID is there. So is it possible for you to please uh, download the mRNA structure of this particular protein and then predict it its primary structure? So if you can do this, uh, then we can move to the secondary structure prediction. Rest, uh, I can take up your question uh, uh, on your mail. And uh, probably while people are doing this, maybe I can. Uh, sorry, ma'am, uh, I will ask you to repeat the question, please. Absolutely no issue. 
Yeah, meanwhile, uh, you download the sequence and I'm reading out the next question. Yeah. How much confidence level is acceptable in the results of FIRE 2? Okay, so uh, because FIRE 2 is an ab initio method, so uh, higher confidence level, more than 80% will be better. But more important is, uh, in addition to looking at the confidence level, we should also look at the protein coverage level that is very important that how much of coverage of protein that it is taking if it is uh, you know lower than 40 percent lower than 50 percent then we cannot use it because you know half of your amino acids are not taken into consideration of the structure and th that would be more uh, so we consider both the things over there we also consider the confidence level which should be uh, generally like I prefer to have between 90% to 100% and the coverage also should be more than 90%. Otherwise, because it is an ab initio method, so it should have higher level of coverage level as well. Thank you, Dr. Archana. This was the question from uh, Ms. Soma and I uh, again repeat participants if you want any further clarity more discussion on this she has already shared her mail id you can ask her more questions through her uh, email so the next question is uh, <clears throat> what is the ideal coverage of amino acid sequence for protein modeling for good confidence on structure so it depends on the fact that which method has been used if it is a homology modeling up to like uh, like you have you can have uh, more than 70 percent that is one level you can have more than 40 percent that is second level and you can have another that is 30 percent so it depends on the use if you have to use for a very high level uh, further analysis then 70 percent ident uh, 70 percent uh, should be there homology should be there if uh, so it depends on on the fact but minimum of 30 percent all wage should be there below than that we can definitely not take it thank you uh, there is one more question yes ma'am what is the clustering rmst value Okay, so this needs a more explanation of, you know, uh, the 3D modeling and its validation. So I will share a paper with you. Probably that will be more helpful to you. So okay. uh, here uh, I won't be able to explain it right now because it is a little lengthy answer. All right. Fine, that should uh, solve the purpose. And of course, uh, she will be available for more discussions one to one. Yeah. Whoever has any further query. Uh, that is all what we had about from the question answer session and uh, meanwhile we can ask the participants if they're they have downloaded the sequence yeah so um, because i'm not actually able to interact with the participants so uh, it is a little uh, difficult to know whether they have been able to uh, download this sequence or not so if okay. somebody uh, can dr zishan is there any way that we can activate a uh, chat box uh, we can activate for some selected participants if they raise their hands. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there are some. Some reaksha. Yeah, so. So the, um, would you like to? Okay, so there are a few uh, participants like uh, Sankrit is there and actually okay. Sankrit is from okay. Hansraj col col uh, okay. College only. So have you been able to download the sequence? I hope they have been able to. This is how they are raising their hands. So uh, would you like to predict its uh, primary structure? So do you remember uh, which tool I asked you? So I will just share the link for that. Wait for a while. So here is the tool. I hope uh, 
I am presenting myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the slide is visible. Yeah. So uh, it's a tool of XPASI, which allows you to perform many other uh, function. You can predict uh, the molecular weight of a protein over XPASI and so many functions it allows you to do. So you can use the translate function of XPASI and the link is given over here. You can use this link to translate your messenger RNA. Uh, Dr. Archana, do you have access to the chat box? Uh, I will just check, ma'am. No, not yet. I see only raise hand and then the participants list. Yeah, we shall will look into it. Yeah. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Yes. Uh, ma'am, uh, can we directly enter the accession ID in the uh, XPC? Uh, <laughs> there's no need of sequence retrieval first. Yeah, it can be done, but it depends whether you have taken the gene sequence or you have taken the mRNA sequence. Because if you can recall, the gene sequence have intronic sequence as well, right? So if you put intronic sequence for translation, it will it is going to create a mess. And that is why we prefer to take mRNA sequence. So if your gene ID is of mRNA, you can definitely do that. But if it is not, then you first need to download your mRNA sequence and then you need to do it. I hope I'm clear to you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Dr. Archana, could you please share the slide again with the gene code? Yeah, sure, ma'am. Maybe I can put the gene code here itself. So the gene code is here in this slide itself. And I, I think you will be able to see. So here is the gene code. Now, have you been able to access your chat box, uh, Dr. Archana? I will just check, ma'am. OK. No, not yet. Okay. Uh, it will not work because it was not working for an, uh, other sessions also. But uh, if there is something that is that needs to share with the participants, it can be done on Telegram. Uh, if it is shared with Dr. Ruchi, she can share uh, the material on Telegram group. OK, but uh, I'm sorry, I'm not using Telegram these days. I used to have it, but now I have uh, deinstalled it. So no, 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 ma'am. Uh, I was saying if you can share anything uh, by a, by any way to Dr. Ruchi, she will. Uh, sure, she I, can. Will, I will share it with Dr. Ruchi and she can pass it on to uh, whosoever needs it. Yeah, yes, for sure that can be done. All right, so right now, now how do we go ahead? Uh, now we we need to know whether you have been able to translate your mRNA or not. Did you get a particular frame uh, which is valid? So I need uh, to know that. OK, Surbi is asking which DNA strand do we have to select forward or reverse? Anyone can be used. All right, Surbi, anyone can be used. I think uh, I can also do and then maybe I can show you too. But only thing is results for this particular experiment. We will get the results, but for other experiments. Uh, uh, Dr. Archana, what you can do is you yeah. can uh, just, uh, use this accession number uh, and uh, just demonstrate the participants so they can see the demonstration and they can try it later on. OK, all right, all right. So now the participants can put their hands down. Right, Dr. Archana? Yes, ma'am. 
Yeah, since ma'am is going to show it to you through her own presentation, so you can put your hands down. Yeah. If you have any other anything else to ask or any other doubt, then you can raise your hands again. So uh, I hope you are able to see the uh, page NCBI page, which has the same ID as I have given you. Are you able to see it? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. clear, it's visible. Okay. All right. So I want to retrieve the mRNA sequence. So I'm just going to go down. So I just want to remind you over here that the, all the accessor numbers, which has the initials as NC, they are going to give you the genomic sequence. The initials with NM are going to give you the mRNA sequence and the initials with NP are going to give you the protein sequence. So we are interested in mRNA sequence. So we click it here. And then I will go to the faster sequence. And I have the faster sequence with me so I can just copy it. And then I can just put it on the translate tool. So do you see the uh, how does the tool uh, page look like? Yes, it is visible. OK, thank you, ma'am. And uh, I will have to copy the sequence again because I copied something else in between. So here I put my sequences over here and then. I'm going to just do the translation. So. It is showing me the sequence again, and then I'm asking you. Then I'm asking it translate is a tool. Why it is not translating now? Yeah, it is here. So you see there are frame one, frame two, frame three, and frame one, frame two, and frame three, frame three again. So I hope you understand the meaning of uh, these frames. So say, for example, if you have an mRNA sequence, so it will have its complementary sequence as well. OK, so basically there are two strands in a DNA, right? So either first strand or the second strand can encode for a protein. So that is possible, right? Now the thing is, why do we have six? Because each of the strand can have three different types of amino acids getting synthesized. Say for example, protein synthesis might start from first A. In that case, the codon will read like AAA, CAA, TGC and so on. The second possibility is that, that the protein synthesis is starting from the second A and the codons reads like AAC, AAT, GCT and so on. The third possibility is that that it is starting from the third amino third amino acid or the third A and the codons read like ACA, ATG, CTT and so on. So there are three possibilities and this is how we get three different frames. And the best frame generally it gives you as the first result. So this is the translation of the protein because the rest of them you see after just few amino acids, there is a stop codon. After just few amino acids, there is a stop codon. So these are not valid proteins which are being shown by its translation. So this is the primary structure of the, of the particular uh, gene that we selected for. Mm, sorry. 
that we selected for uh, protein translation. So let me just uh, show it on your slide. So now we have got the primary structure of this particular protein. Now we need to know the secondary structure of this protein. Now in order to understand the secondary structure of this protein, we are going to use another tool which is called as Cypred. So let's take the site uh, for Cypred. I'll take it from here and then I will stop presenting this and I will go to my internet file. So this is how the, the page for Cypred is going to look like. Now, this is the query box where I can just uh, paste, uh, sorry, I'll have to take the protein sequence again. So I will just I have taken the primary structure or the amino acid composition of the protein and I will give it a job name. Say for example, I will give one name. Uh, it was map KK2. So that's what I'm going to give it to it. And I'm also going to give email ID here. So I can just do that and then I can submit my results. And it takes a few minutes to get your results and it will tell you that which are the amino acids which are involved in the mm, helix formation and then which are the amino acids that may be involved in uh, coil formation or loop formation or beta sheet formation depending on the composition of the amino acid what is the kind of hydrogen bonds that it is forming. Yeah. So, we see here that the pink colored amino acid, these are symbols of amino acids. So the pink color ones are involved in the helix formation. The yellow color ones are involved in strand formation and we have only these two color. So this is how the results for secondary structure prediction <coughs> looks like. So uh, here you don't see any, you know, signal peptide. You don't see a uh, transmembrane helix. Also, you don't see, but you see coils. So uh, the light gray structure that you see, these uh, light gray, I mean, I mean the amino acids which, which are highlighted by light gray structures, they are going to form the coils. So the three uh, components of the secondary structures are the helix formation, strand formation as well, and the coils that we see. And if you click here, show amino acid types, it will tell you that there are aromatic amino acids in these proteins and there are polar amino acids as well. There are hydrophobic amino acids and there are small non-polar amino acids as well. So, From here, we can make out that uh, from here to here, it is helix formation which is happening. From here to here, strands are formed, again helix, 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 and strands are formed in, at this particular position. Then um, helix are formed. So this is how we do 
the secondary structure prediction. Now the tertiary level of a prediction is by FHIR2. Sometimes FHIR2 may take long, but many a time it doesn't even take, uh, like maybe in few minutes you may get the um, structures available to you. So it depends. So yeah, so here you see the, you can observe the FHIR2 uh, page. How does it look like? And in, in order to authenticate that this is the one, you can always uh, check with the link which is provided in the literature and then maybe uh, you can perform this three-dimensional structure. So it is an ab initio method and there are chances that maximum number of amino acids will be um, covered. But there is a limitation of this tool that the, you will get, get an extended structure like you know few amino acid will be present like a ribbon as such as if it is not involved in any type of bond formation but uh, because it is ab initio it is not homology based so it is not a very accepted kind of uh, model prediction but if you don't have a choice you have to be uh, you know dependent on this only when there is no homologous stru uh, structures available we have to depend on this so i'm going to give again the primary structure to it although for secondary structure prediction primary st uh, structure is required that is amino acid composition is required but for tertiary structure also amino acid composition is required secondary structures are not required okay so and then we do the fire search so our job is in queue we need to wait and whenever it will be done it is telling that it will take a uh, four hour to 3.5 hour so um, usually like there are many uh, tools which are you know you can buy it so there are softwares which you can buy and it will perform because it will perform only for you at that point of time so it will perform and you will get the results within few minutes but because it is a you know um, freely available tool so it is taking so many uh, uh, queries together uh, so that is why it, it takes a huge lot of time so it, though it is showing uh, four hours or 3.5 hours but i'm sure it is not going to all that long we are going to get it uh, before that so uh, it will come on my email or uh, it, it will be shown here as well. So if, if I keep it open, most likely I'm able to uh, show you the three dimensional structure as well. So as I told you, the applications of uh, prediction of three dimensional, why it is needed to have three dimensional structure. Say for example, if I take this protein, uh, MAPKK2, its structure is not at all available on PTB. Now, if I want to know what is its single k partner or what is its triple k partner unless i have the structure for all the three i won't be able to predict it either so that is why it is important to have the three dimensional structure and it uh, because it is not available on pdb so we can rely on the prediction method but definitely we generally do not rely on one method we have to use other methods as well and then we validate that which structure is better, which has a better confidence level, which has a better coverage, and that can be taken up for further analysis of your protein. So basically, uh, say for example, if you do, uh, you know, homology modeling, and if the template which you have used for homology modeling is, uh, you know, is more than 70%, then you are very confident that your structure that you have predicted is really good. And if the coverage is more than 90%, then it is all the more good. But every time you do not get it, and that is why sometimes you do not uh, take the entire length of amino acid, but it is important that if in a protein a particular functional domain is present you must check that whether the um, whether the portion of protein that has been taken should must contain 
the functional domain because later on if you are going to uh, analyze it further if the functional domain itself is missing you would be able to characterize that protein further so uh, it is a time taking process usually we just uh, put it for uh, three dimensional uh, prediction three dimensional structure prediction and then we uh, do something else and when we get the results then we uh, try to resolve the issue that which one is a better structure which one is not all that good so generally when i uh, do the three dimensional structure prediction of map kinases what i have observed because it is a conjugate protein so what i have observed it shows um, uh, uh, greater homology with human map kinases or yeast map kinases as compared to plant map kinases the reason is not that uh, it is i mean this is not the only reason that it is very conjugate but definitely the functional domain is common in human and in plants as well but because there is no structure from plants are available so then it ha it has to show the homology with human or with the yeast so uh, these are the limitations and i must tell you here that there are more animal proteins for which the or human proteins for which the structures are available as compared to plant proteins so this is how sometimes we get stuck we are not able to do homology modeling with plant proteins because their homologous templates are not available in the databases so uh, if you are pursuing this experiment with me i would suggest that you get your results and you can share your uh, you know you choose your best protein because i am not able to uh, see it right now so i won't be able to explain it to you but of course you can uh, choose based on the explanation which i have given you uh, or you can ask me that which one is a better one and then mm, you can send it on my mail okay so probably uh, because uh, pro it is taking time and only uh, you know even less than one fourth part is done so it might it may be a lengthy process but uh, it gives you a good structure and if your uh, confidence level is high if your coverage is high you can use it further um, for your anal further analysis okay and uh, say for example if i have to do uh, docking for this particular protein so what i can do is i can take all the map single k which are present in arabidopsis genome so i will take their structure uh, i will if the structures are available well and fine if not available i will have to predict their structure as well and then i will do one by one docking with my receptor to all the map single k and the ones which are going to show me the maximum score will tell me that this particular map kinase is more comfortable interacting with this one so probably they may be a part of a particular pathway so this is how you can find out an upstream protein in a pathway or a downstream protein in a pathway so uh, i think uh, you can try doing that with the help of patch doc and um then you can send me your results as well okay that should be uh, the best option and that they will do it and send the results to you because uh, you know before getting the certificates they have to complete their assignments so uh, probably we can include this in their uh, assignments yeah so for the same gene id you can uh, take a screenshot of your primary structure you can take a screenshot of the secondary structure the tertiary structure and you can try um, docking it with any of the map single k as in mitogen activated protein kinase molecule if you want i can give you the id for that as well so that you uh, you can do the docking in a better way otherwise it will be difficult for you to find out that which protein you should take
So uh, let me just give you another ID for which you can uh, try doing uh, docking. It is also possible to do uh, docking with any other molecule other than a different protein. But if you do with the protein only, still it is possible. There are certain tools, um, I must tell you, which allow It's not giving me the right ID. OK. I may need to write the complete name, maybe. So uh, this time I'm just going to give you the protein ID itself so that you can straight away download the protein sequence. So Maybe I can just uh, remove all this. So this is uh, this is the first gene which we have taken, and this is the protein to which you can uh, predict the three-dimensional structure after taking the primary structure of this protein, and then you can allow docking the first one with the second one using patch dock. It it is easier because you just have to you know. Uh, copy and paste the primary structure of the two proteins, one as a receptor and other as a ligand. And then uh, you just have to do fire search. Uh, sorry, you, you just have to uh, allow interaction and then you will be able to uh, get the results. Based on the score, you can then uh, say that whether this particular interaction is actually possible or not. And uh, based on the energy minimization, now this energy minimization is also uh, based on the fact that how uh, these proteins are going to look like in the cellular environment and what is the possibility that they are going to interact for some time. And all the dockings are then confirmed by simulation. This is also important to know. So uh, you can do that and send me on my mail and I'm definitely going to revert you back with, uh, with my comments on your results. Meanwhile, uh, Dr. Archana, there is a question. Yeah. Can I uh, ask this question right now? Yes, ma'am. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the question is asked by Supriyo. Is it possible to dock multiple proteins with single ligand at once, not individually? Uh, uh, see, it, it is possible to do, but you won't be able to perform this experiment with this freely available tools. Then in that case, you have to use really very, uh, uh, you know, um, good tools which are generally paid. But uh, this patch doc is will not allow you to do for sure. Yeah. Thank you. So there are other tools like, you know, which are paid. We need to pay for it. So there are softwares which you can buy and uh, usually the bioinformatic labs, they have it. So you can also, if you are very keen on doing it, you can also request them. Uh, you can collaborate with them and then you can perform your interactions, but it is certainly possible. Thanks again. Yes. Anything else you would like to share with the students? Yeah, so I just want to tell you that uh, using uh, bioinformatic tools is uh, really very easy. 
um, how to use it you can get it uh, from anyone or you can learn it from anyone once and then you can so what is important here is if you are a bioinformatician or if you want to use you should have a good idea that uh, so you should uh, need to you need to read research articles you need to see that what could be a good question to answer using these tools anybody uh, it's not a uh, very difficult. It is a very easy discipline, let me tell you, but your questions would be good. Using the tool is not all that important. Another aspect of bioinformatics is developing a tool. So that is a, a little tough as compared to using a tool because using a tool you can just learn um, by getting trained by someone or even YouTube, YouTube these days can train you to use it, right? But Developing is tool. Uh, developing a tool is all the more important, and uh, so that uh, you are actually the, the way in a biological experiment you produce a product. So similarly in bioinformatics, when you have developed a database, that means you have produced a product product which will be used by many people, and so you are serving for your nation, for many of the scientists, and then you get a great satisfaction. So that is also part of bioinformatics. So this is what I want to share with my students and everyone yes. who is here. Thank you. There's another question. Yes, uh, the question is like, can we perform a protein protein docking for some protein that does not have a structure, 3D structure in PDB? Yes, definitely you can. You have to predict then the structure for both of them. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Is that all uh, or this uh, anything else that you would like to share? Uh, I think this is all. If anybody has a question, you can always uh, come and ask me. Yeah, sure. Uh, and of course, the option I'm repeating that uh, she has already given her mail ID. You can have uh, contact. You can have uh, get in touch with her one to one basis and have, uh, you know, deeper discussions also. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Archana. It was so wonderful to uh, have you and uh, I'm sure you know, it was a treat to all of us to go through this experience of protein modeling, docking, and uh, it appeared so simple. It appeared, you know, anybody can do it, but I'm sure it's not that simple. It is your uh, understanding of the subject, which is so good that you made appear complicated things very simple. And also, uh, uh, I personally feel the basic message that uh, has been conveyed through your talk in the beginning that uh, the students should lay a lot of emphasis on the basic understanding of the subject. Then only that can be applied in uh, other fields and you can have meaningful, as you yourself said just now, that you have to have a good question. There are enough tools to handle. So uh, that was a treat actually uh, for all of us. And uh, I am so thankful to you from uh, on behalf of organizers and on my own behalf. I thank you from the core of my heart for taking out your time uh, and giving such an excellent presentation. And also that uh, you are, uh, I'm sure, keeping your doors open uh, for our students to join you as, um, you know, research interns and maybe later on as uh, research scholars as well. So it was so wonderful to have you. And um, I personally feel that we should be looking forward to have more from you in future as well. Thank you once again. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. I would like to share here that one student from KMC, and it's not that I'm only giving this privilege to my students of Hansraj College only. One student from KMC, Radhika, she worked with me for one year and she has got a wonderful publication uh, in a year itself. And one student from Hindu College, she also worked with me. So I'm open to everyone. You are always welcome. Oh, that's so wonderful. That's so wonderful. And that probably such platforms are, uh, you know, uh, a big advantage to the students who wish to uh, have some doors open for them and they do not know where to go, whom to approach. And these, uh, the purpose of having such workshops is probably facilitating the, you know, uh, exchange of ideas between the labs and the student directly. Thank you once again, Dr. Archana. It was so wonderful to have you. And uh, we shall be looking forward to more from you in future. Uh, I would also uh, like to thank 
are uh, from on behalf of the organizing committee we wish to uh, express our heartfelt thanks to our principal professor masroor ahmed beg for all the support and the facilities that he provides and to the webinar uh, team of the college who has been working tirelessly with everybody who organizes a webinar and uh, like in this whole series of uh, webinars that have been going on they have been lending a great support and uh, <clears throat> also thanks are due to the faculty members who have uh, you know taken out their time and given their ideas uh, we have uh, you know got these faculty members from across the country who have been working and who have been uh, you know Uh, contributing towards this workshop so that was uh, something that really needs special acknowledgement and uh, a big thanks to our student volunteers who are always a very big, big support and they give their best whatever task is assigned to them and uh, i would like to remind uh, the participants that tomorrow we shall meet in the morning at 9:30 for a session on computer aided drug design by dr brijesh rathi he is also from hansraj college and that will be followed by valedictory session so with these words i wish you all safe and healthy times ahead thank you we wind up today's session